Good morning. Welcome home to Unity of Arlington. We're so very pleased that you're here with us today. And not only you in the sanctuary, but those of you watching online in your slippers and your robe. We're just proud to have you with us this morning, and let's start our celebration with a bit of music. Right here, right now, I'm gonna make a brand new start. Right here, right now, I'm gonna make a change in my heart. Everything I need, I now receive, and it's done unto me as I believe. Right here, right now, where I am. Right here. are flowing, eyes are twinkling, smiles are happening. Please stand and join us in singing. Woke up this morning. I woke up this morning with my mind staying on spirit. I woke up this morning with my mind staying on spirit. I woke up this morning with my mind Stayed on spirit, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can't hate your neighbor with the mind. No, no, no. Stayed on spirit, stayed on spirit, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Walk in it down. Stayed on spirit, walking and talking with my mind. Stayed on spirit, walking and talking with my mind. Stayed on spirit, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Here we go now. Rising and shining with my mind. Stay Stayed on spirit, rising and shining with my mind. Stayed on spirit, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Woo. All right, you may be seated. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome home to Unity of Arlington. I'm Steve Morris. Our minister, Reverend Ann Tabor, is taking some time off uh, for just a couple more weeks, and it's my great joy to be your worship leader this morning. Uh, we are grateful for all of you that are here this morning, uh, and it's just those of you that are here this morning uh, because our internet is down, so no people on the internet. <laughs> So this is a special live and in-person only service today. So, so anything goes, brace yourselves. Because <laughs> there's no recorded proof of anything that happens today. So. <laughs> this is a beautiful morning. I did not think I would see so many people here. I thought the cold was going to keep people away, and it did not. So that's very exciting uh, because this is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. It's a beautiful day. Uh, this is also a place where we get to open our hearts, we open our minds, and we are open to the call of spirit. Uh, we like to say that you are here by divine appointment, so thank you for keeping your appointment with spirit this morning. If you are here for the very first time, uh, anybody? 
Uh, our ushers would love to give you a welcome packet uh, that will give you all kinds of great information about Unity of Arlington. And I would like at this time to go ahead and introduce our wonderful guest speaker for today. He'll be joining us a little bit later in the service. And we are thrilled to welcome back once again, Mr. Michael Brundy. <laughs> To get you excited, I'm going to give you a little preview of what he's going to be talking about today, and that's that people have the ability to put others under their spell. It's called charisma. It's a different kind of spell. It's not a kind of magic, you know, Halloween spell. Charisma is the ability to charm and inspire others, a divinely conferred power of ta or talent, a divine gift that can be a force for good in our world. When people use their gifts of charisma, their positive attitudes can be contagious. They can begin to make a difference in the world and in the lives of others. When charismatic people use their gift to inspire positive change, amazing things happen. They become catalysts for transformation, lighting the way for others to follow. So today we're going to explore different ways to use this charismatic spell. I'm excited. All right, now about Michael. Michael is a motivating and inspired speaker and storyteller. Uh, this is a thing I uh, like this because everyone gets very excited about this fact about him, uh, that he retired from AT&T after 30 years of service and he never missed a day of work. Well. <laughs> See, some, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> There's a person who's like, I, I choose to use my days. Because <laughs> they give me those days as part of my, as part of my poor work package, I'm taking them. Uh, but I, I find that very impressive. Uh, Michael identifies his passion as a desire to communicate with and empower others. He's an author of four books and the president of his own speaking company called I Speak. Michael received a Bachelor of Arts degree in Social Sciences from Emporia State University in Emporia, Kansas, and a Master of Arts degree in Business from Linwood College in St. Charles, Missouri. But he would say that his most valuable lessons came from his elders, teachers, and life experiences. Uh, let's, the best thing though, I think the best and smartest thing he ever did was uh, marry this lovely woman right over here. So. <laughs> That's why I believe in him. <laughs> I'm like, I believe in what he says, because I'm like, okay, you got new aura, you must be doing something right. So let's give him a warm welcome to Michael Brunde. <laughs> And now in just a few minutes, Jose Ortiz is going to read the daily word for us in Spanish, and then I will read the daily word in English for today, Sunday, October 29th. But first, our song leaders are going to lead us in our welcome song, My Soul is Welcome Here, and then we'll take a few minutes in the middle of the song to greet one another. Uh, please remember, uh, as you are greeting folks, that uh, handshakes, smiles, and high fives are op optional as well as hugs, um, so please be respectful of everybody else's personal space. Uh, do what is most comfortable for you. And now, let's sing and greet All one right, another. Please stand and sing with us. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. Oh, my soul is welcome here. Oh, my soul is welcome here. I am getting the message loud and clear. My soul is welcome here. Please greet one another. At the right time, I am just where I'm supposed to be. 
Some of you have forgotten how this works, <laughs> but when the music stops, you freeze. Freeze, you freeze. <laughs> That's a different place. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. La palabra diaria para el día de hoy, domingo 29 de octubre del 2023, es imaginación. Y la afirmación es: imagino y creo mi vida más espléndida. Admiro el don del narrador para crear mundos extraordinarios. Me sumerjo en la narración, permitiéndome sentir la maravilla, el regocijo e incluso la tristeza que la imaginación del narrador crea. No importa lo aterrador que sea el relato, no hay nada que temer. Es solo un cuento. La sabiduría y la voluntad divina, además de mi imaginación, me ayudan a crear una vida positiva y con sentido. Fe, amor fortaleza y comprensión se unen a mi imaginación para construir la vida plena que desea mi corazón. De las Sagradas Escrituras, Joel, capítulo 2, versículo 28, derramaré mi espíritu sobre la humanidad entera y los hijos y las hijas de ustedes profetizarán. Los ancianos tendrán sueños y los jóvenes recibirán visiones. Nuevamente, la palabra diaria para el día de hoy es imaginación, y la afirmación es, imagino y creo mi vida más espléndida. Muchas gracias. For those of you that do not have um, 400 days in a row of Duolingo in Spanish like I do, <laughs> I will now translate for you. <laughs> morning is imagination, imagination. And our affirmation this morning, I imagine and create my most magnificent life. I admire the storyteller's gift for creating fantastic worlds where impossible things happen. I immerse myself in the story, allowing myself to feel the wonder, the exhilaration, and even the sadness that the storyteller's imagination has created. No matter how scary the story, there is nothing to fear. It's only a story. My imagination helps me create my life story. Guided by my divine wisdom and will, I imagine a positive, meaningful life. If disturbing thoughts cloud my imagination, I remember I am God's living expression. There is nothing to fear. My spiritual gifts. Our scripture this morning comes from Joel 2.28. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Again, our affirmation for this morning. I imagine and create my most magnificent life. And our word today is imagination. And now if you will take that imagination, take that into your heart and set your prayerful intention for our service this morning, knowing that as you ask, believing you are already receiving. So just take a moment and set that intention. And so it is. At this time, I invite as a reminder of that Christ light, the divine presence that is within each and every one of us. This is your weekly reminder that you are the light of the world and you are meant to shine. Diana will be stationed here at the front of the sanctuary after the service. If you would like uh, some individual prayer support, she'll be happy to pray with you. And remember that things that you tell our prayer chaplains are confidential. Uh, you may also fill out a prayer request slip. Uh, they're located here next to the prayer chest. After you fill that out, place it there in the chest. And 
our prayer chaplains will pray for those requests for 30 days, and then they will send them on to Silent Unity for an additional 30 days of prayer. So if you would like that service, please take advantage of it. If you think of some prayers at, when you're at home and not here, you can go to the website, unityofarlington.org, click on the prayer request button there, and fill those out as well. Our prayer chaplains will see those, and the same thing will happen for you. And now, because prayer is important, please join us in our opening prayer. <laughs> we know it. Together, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the good, and so it is. Amen. And now please join me in welcoming back our song leaders uh, who are going to bless us with love is my decision as we prepare to think about love in our meditation. Right here now, I invite you to close your eyes and relax, to get comfortable in your chair, put your feet flat on the floor. You may want to put your hands in your lap in an open position. Let that chair support you. And let's all take in a deep breath together and exhale together. And breathe in again. And exhale. And as you continue that breathing pattern, just picture the air that you're breathing in as being clear and clean and crisp, full of love. And that love just fills you up. And as you exhale, let the air that you breathe out take away any tension or stress that you feel in your body. Let it remove any doubts or trouble that you have in your body or your mind. Just let that go for right now. And as you continue to breathe, know that every cell of your body, divine intelligence is directing divine ideas of love, strength, vitality, and purposefulness throughout your body. As you continue to be aware of your intake and your exhale of air, let each breath deepen your connection to spirit this morning. Feel that connection to God, to the universe. And as you breathe, open your heart 
and your soul and your mind to hear the message that spirit, that God, that the universe wants to remind you of. That our imagination is one of our spiritual gifts, a spiritual power from the universe. So open your heart and your mind and just imagine. Just imagine what God might be saying to you this morning. My sweet, precious one, right now in this moment, know that you have everything that you need. Remember and know that I love you. Know that I'm always with you and I always love you. And any time that you need me, you just need to take in a breath and remember. Remember that I'm always with you because you are a part of me and I am a part of you. So anytime that you need me, all you have to do is breathe. We are always and forever connected. And that connection means that you are powerful. My precious one, choose to live in that power. Remember that you have divine wisdom. So choose that wisdom to guide you. You have the power and the wisdom to create the life that you want. Go forward knowing that you can create a life that is full of peace, a life full of love. And so you take a deep breath in filled with love and peace and you exhale and release everything else for there is only love as we move into the silence you will feel the love moving through you let your mind be filled with people that you love let your mind be filled with the things that bring joy to you and feel your connection to spirit. As we move into the silence, you will release anything that is not love. Anything that was bothering you fades away with each breath. And with each breath, love grows and fills you with peace. Divine love, we are grateful that in this moment you are engulfing every fiber of our being. And we're grateful that we have the choice and the ability. We remember that there is only love. And we know this to be true. And we must remember that knowing is not enough, that we must choose to act on it. We are the source of love in this world. We are love in action. We are divine love and we will remember to choose love. To choose to be love. 
and to choose to share love in this world. For that is who we are. We are loved and we are blessed. And so it is. As you are comfortable, please take wiggle your toes. And as you think about and remember your true nature, please join us in singing, I am so blessed. Good morning again, and I'm so, so, so glad to be here today. Uh, we're we're going to talk about uh, uh, charisma and that gift of charisma that we, that we all have. But, but first, before I get started, we, we've got to do just a little bit of housekeeping, uh, okay, so I can get, get started rightly. Um, when I first came up with the topic about talking about charisma, then I, I thought that I would add the word spell to it, you know, charisma and how it puts a spell on folks. And, and as soon as, you know, I, I, as soon as I sent it to Reverend Ann, you know, I, I heard back from her. I, I was trying to be like Dr. Tracy. You know, Dr. Tracy came and spoke to you guys, I know. And, and she related to you how the Texas State Fair could be, you know, spiritual. So I figured, you know, charisma, Halloween, spell, you know, I tried to put all those together. And, and, and Reverend Ann, she wrote me back, she said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, you know. She said, you know now, we're not into that sorcery stuff, and we don't put spell or that you're real careful, that you don't wait till you get way deep into the talk and then tell the folks that it's not about sorcery. You need to make sure that they know right up front that it's not about sorcery. Reverend Ann, she, she looks out for you guys, you know, and, and I think that she must have did the same thing with Reverend Roach because I know I, I went and listened to his talk and he was talking about the devil made me do it. And I noticed that the first thing he did was he made sure y'all knew what he really meant when he said the devil. And he wasn't talking about a little red guy with horns. So now, now, now. The reverend and the doctor, they probably didn't need that coaching that Reverend Ann gave me, you know, to make sure that I got it out there first. But, but I really appreciate the fact that, you know, she, she pulled my coat and she told me, wait a minute, make sure you get this out there first, okay? So I want you guys to know we're not talking about any magic or any sorcery or any of that, you know, that kind of stuff, okay? And, and make sure, Reverend Ann, if you're listening and watching, you know I got to me, and it must mean... Well, it means, one, that when I was here before, I must have did a good job, and you guys said, hey, have him come back. But, but more importantly, it means that, sh that she trusts me, too. And uh, I think when you let somebody come and speak to your congregation, that's like letting somebody come into your house and, and be a part of your family. And, and, you know, Reverend Ann may have spent a whole lot of time getting you guys to see the light of the world, and I come in here with a whole bunch of darkness. <laughs> <laughs> That, that wouldn't, wouldn't work, so I appreciate the fact that she lets me come, and uh, plus I like seeing all you guys, so that, that makes it even better. 
Oh. <laughs> so let's talk about charisma, that gift of charisma. That's what I call it. it it's something that, that's kind of special. I think we, we all get it. But first, I want to let you know what, what I think charisma is. You know, if, if you're charismatic, then you have a certain kind of Oh, a certain kind of power, a certain kind of way of inspiring people. People want to be around you. They, they, they kind of like you, you know. Uh, they see something. You that, That's my, my version of being charismatic. Now, if I was to look at the, the dictionary or something like that, I'm sure that they would say that, you know, it's a set of behaviors that people have or that include their communication skills, verbal as well as nonverbal skills, their ability to connect with other people, all those types of things they would say is charisma. Now, my personal definition, and I don't know where I've got it, but I've been holding on to this one for like years, so I can't tell you where it came from. I can't even tell you that it's true because I went to go look it up to find out if it was true, and I couldn't find it anywhere. But I think that charisma is the Christ inside of us. You know, what, what, whatever that is that makes, you know, Jesus the Christ and act like he does or makes the Buddha the way he is, that special something that's in all of us that makes us connect with other people, that makes other people want to be around us, that makes people, you know, happy to be there with us. I, I think that's what charisma is for me. So don't think about that sorcery stuff or magic, okay? Go with me on it's the Christ within part, okay? Because that's something I think that we all have. Now, I, I got some papers here, and I want to get rid of this because I don't like having to read. So I want to share with you some quotes real quick, some quotes that I couldn't memorize, so I have to read them, okay? But I think they really are good definitions of charisma. The first one says that, and this is by a guy named Willie Jolly. Willie Jolly's a motivational speaker, a guy that I happen to know even. You know, he says, charisma is not just charm. He says, it's a kind of inner quality that sets you apart. But I like this other one, too. It's by a guy named Robert Brault. Now, I don't know Robert at all, but he still has a good way of saying this. He says, charisma is not so much getting people to like you as getting people to like themselves when you are around. I think that's pretty cool, okay? But, but here's my favorite one, okay? My favorite one is this, okay? It's by a guy named, guy or a girl, I, I really don't know, because named Toba Beta, and I really don't know who Toba Beta is, okay? But the quote is fantastic. It says, charisma is the fragrance of the soul. Isn't that wild? Charisma is the fragrance of the soul. You know, I, I, I think I, I also like the way the Greeks say, OK, the Greeks say because charisma comes from the Greek word, OK, and they say that it's a gift, OK, a gift from the gods. Now, as you get into more Christianity and more religion, that that gets to be, you know, even more secular, but it still turns out to be the same, that it's a gift from the gods. And what kind of gifts would the gods give us? The gods would give us the gift of wisdom the gift of understanding, the gift of empathy, the gift of connection, the gift of resilience, all of those things that make us charismatic, the things that make us and help us connect to other people. Those are the gifts of God. And that kind of ties in with my idea about being charismatic as being Christ-like. See? See how that works? It, it, and it's also, you know, we, we always have this thing about, well, charismatic people, and, and I'm not one of them, okay? Because we think, oh, charismatic people are like Martin Luther King, who would be very charismatic. Nelson Mandela, who would be very charismatic. You know, Oprah Winfrey, pretty charismatic. You know, there's, there's a lot, Ella, Ella oh, I can't even say her name, DeGeneres. She's charismatic. I, I think people that that listen like Oprah and Ellen, they, they are, that connects with us. And, and you can see it all over. And, and it's not just with some people. I think all people have it. Now, I don't think that we are always 100% charismatic. I don't think we have all the buttons turned at the same time always going on because it takes a, a lot of different charisma, a lot of different traits to be charismatic. That, that's the thing about being charismatic and charisma. It's not, it's, it's a, behavior traits. So it's a whole bunch of different traits. And since that's what it is, we can all learn. 
So like one of the traits would be having good eye contact. Well, that's something that you can learn. Something about, oh, using your body language. That's something you can learn. So there's certain charismatic traits that you can learn. But I believe that we all start with all of those traits that it's necessary to be charismatic. I think all of us do. And, and somehow or another, we kind of forget that. It will pull you right in there, right? And the baby, when, if you're smart and you hold that baby up and have good eye contact, the baby will giggle and laugh and make you start saying all kinds of weird stuff like goo goo gaga, right? But, but that's the power of that baby's charisma. And, and the baby doesn't care about how you look and you don't care about how you look to that baby. You don't worry about whether your makeup is on right or whether you're too tall or too short, none of those kinds of things. And, and the baby doesn't care about whether they're outdoing the other babies or, or, or not, you know, they're not competing with other babies and, and trying to be the cutest baby, they're just being babies. And they draw us all in like that. You don't see anybody who's not attracted by a baby, right? And, and not only attracted to that baby, but motivated to do things because of that baby. You know, and babies, they can come and be stinky. They spit up on you. They can do all kinds of things. Baby to an infant, to a toddler, to a little person, to a growing up. I think we just hear so many no's. So many no's. And those no's start to cover up all those things that we should be affirming. No, 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 no. You don't look right. You don't look like cute little girls are supposed to look. No, your nose is too big. No, you're, you're, you're too short. You're too tall. No, 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 the way you sound, the way you talk, it, it's not right. No, you sing off key. No, no, no. And, and eventually all those no's start to cover up those things that we want to create, the things that we want to share with other people, the things that we want to affirm, which is our true inner self. I think that's what it is. That's why I know that all of us have charisma. And all of us just have to sometimes recognize that and peel back and uncover some of those traits that we all have. But we all have that charisma. Now, I can tell you when I started to notice my own charisma, see, okay? Because, well, one thing about charisma you got to be authentic. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a little bit of you know, risk with this one, but I'm going to tell you when it got me, okay? Better yet, I got one more card. <laughs> I got to make this easy on myself, okay? So here's what I did, okay? I want to help other people become charismatic and be charismatic, okay? And I want them to learn how to bring that part of them out because I think that's the God in you, the Christ in you. And I think that's how it makes the world a better place. And sometimes I think you can't see in you what other people can see in you, okay? So don't be scared by being charismatic because that just means early like I always try to do. You can tell that this guy here, Mike, Mike has charisma in that area of music because, hey, I sit down, it's like a magnet. I can't move. I can't get up. He's committed to it. You can tell by the way he plays it, you know? He doesn't even have to look at me, but I can feel like we're having a soul-to-soul -soul connection. It's that kind of a thing. You can see it. You can see it in Diane when she jumps up here because she's into music, right? She makes, her charisma makes everybody else want to sing. Everybody else want to follow her. Whether you think you can sing or not, she makes you feel like that, that's the part of it. It's about how people make us feel about ourselves when we're around her. And if you're in the choir with her, you feel like you can sing. You feel like you're a part of something. People that are committed, that charisma just comes out. I, I, I was watching this little lady right here, Cindy, right? Now, Cindy was talking to the guard out there, and she was talking to the guard. <laughs> that, that's it. About, she was learning about the pitches and the hitters and all. I mean, his charisma had her so she could not get away because it was something that he loved and something that he liked doing. And she, I mean, she, she was just there. And I know she was trying to come in here, but, she, but that's what charisma can do, okay? 
So here's some, here's some of the things, okay? Now, here's, here's the, the scary part for me, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you things that you can do to be more charismatic, but I'm going to tell you how, I'm going to use anecdotes and examples from my own life, okay? Now, usually as a speaker, I don't think that it's all that smart to always speak about yourself because that sounds kind of egotistic. It sounds kind of narcissistic, too. But <laughs> I, I was at this... Uh, workshop yesterday uh, that the senior members of my fraternity uh, were having. I'm a, and he, he's about uh, mid-70s or so, but he, he's retired, of course, and he's got all these letters behind his names that shows, you know, about all his experience in being a CPA, an insurance guy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he's told us about, you know, he's, now he's at the point in life where he's done a lot. He's collected a whole bunch of information. But he doesn't want to die until he's empty. Until he's empty. Until he's given all that away. Okay? Now, now that takes a little special something when we get to that point of, one, recognizing that I've got something to give. And two, I'm just bold enough to tell you that I've been doing it long enough. It works. And I want to share it and give it to you. Okay? So I know that I'm charismatic, okay? I know just to be yourself. That's this part, okay? Just being myself and telling you those secrets, okay? So one of the first things that you want to do, okay? Now, you're going to have to bear with me a little while, but I'm going to get it in time, okay? But there's a few of them, okay? But the first one, if you want to be charismatic, smile more. It's that simple. Just smile more. Smile more. You know, that's when I crossed over and knew that, uh-oh, I got something going here. When I learned how to smile. Now, I know to you guys, you think, well, yeah, everybody knows how to smile. And yeah, as a baby, I knew how to smile. And, but as I grew up, that, that got kind of wiped out for me because people would make me feel, or I would think, that my smile wasn't near as attractive because I had a gap. And people would tell me, the kids would tell me, you know, you got a gap so big you could drive a Mack truck between your teeth, you know? So for years and years, my smile would be like teeth. Now, I, I don't know when it happened. I don't know if somebody told me something or, or what, but one day I think I learned that you smile from the inside out. And once I learned that, then I started to learn, wait a minute. It's not about your teeth and your gap. It's your eyes. It's your cheekbones, the expression on your face, all of those things. When I learned that, oh, my goodness, I could start to smile from the inside with no hesitation, without anything holding me back, not feeling self-conscious, just to fully smile. And when I did that, the reaction that I would get from people, people tell me, with my snaggle tooth gaps and all that, that I have a beautiful smile, that they are so attracted by my smile. I'm amazed. <laughs> I was asking Naor, and Naor doesn't give me a lot of compliments, okay? She thinks I, you know, she, where do you see me? She says, well, the, the way you work a room. I can see you when you work a room. I can just see how you go from table to table. I said, okay, but what do I do? She said, you smile. I said, oh, she got it. I smile. That's the key, and everybody can do it. Just smile. When you smile, other people smile back at you, okay? Now, the, the second thing it says on here, and it's kind of hard to see. I need to put on my glasses, but it says, my favorite, okay? Because people don't get this one, okay? If you want to be charismatic, look people in their beautiful eyes, okay? And I said, into their beautiful eyes, okay? Now, you don't just become charismatic. You learn things along the way, watching other people, going through experiences. For me, it was watching older people, watching people in my church, going through Toastmasters, learning how to speak, learning things about eye contact. And what really gets me most is when people tell me, I heard somebody say, well, look at their forehead, look at their eyebrows. No, no, look in their eyes. In their eyes. The eyes truly are the windows of the soul. But it takes both. You got to give it to get it. And when you do that, people open up. And not only do people open up, you open up. 
You let people see the Christ in you when you open up your eyes and you see it in them when you open up your eyes. Now, the only people that I know who do this and, and it doesn't work is them boxers, those fighters, you know, that stand next to each other and stare at each other before the fight. Now, that kind of crazy eye contact that gets you all mad at the other guy, that ain't what I'm talking about, okay? Okay? But any other eye contact, look in their eyes, okay? That's the key. That will make, oh, that will make a heck of a difference in your life if you want to be charismatic, okay? Now, oh, your body language tells you a whole bunch now, okay? And, and that sounds like, you know, something simple, but it's something that you can't hide. So if you talk to professionals about how do, you want to, how do you read people, how do you learn to read people, well, they'll tell you about body language because there's some things you can't hide. You can't hide that quivering lip, okay? You can't hide those blinking eyelids. You, you forget that your legs are crossed a certain way or that you're turned a certain way, or you fool around and say, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you forget those things. But if you do forget those things, believe me, your connection with other people will be just lost right there. Your body language, your body says so much. And when you, the way you sit, the way you walk, the way you just lean close to people, th that's what I like around here. You know what bothers me most about COVID? What really bothers me most whether it's this church or mine at CSL, is I don't get to really like hug people like I could. Because for me, that's like a part of body language, you know? That's like really body language when I really hug them. And I, and I miss that because our body language is so important. Our bodies do speak. Now, these are my two favorites, okay? And I've already said a little bit about this already. But one is embrace your oddities and be willing to be vulnerable. I, 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 grew up as, I grew up as a little runt, okay? I was too short, I was too skinny, I was too dark, my hair was too nappy, my nose was too big, the gap between my teeth was too big. Everything, everything was negative. It took me a long, long time to learn to, to love me and to embrace me. And part of that turned out by finding out that, you know, just like little bitty guys have problems being short, big old tall guys like Brother Cobb over there, I bet they had problems being tall. You know, some of the things that you thought was just an ugly mole or whatever, somebody else saw it as a beauty mark. You know, and as the older I get, the more I realize that everybody looks a little bit different. And nobody has it, unless you're twins. I mean, nobody has an I ideal. And the sooner that you can learn to just embrace your looks, your whatever that's vulnerable about you, your oddities, what you find out is that those are the things that work for you. It's amazing. The things that you, know, that you think are holding you down, they work best for you. Okay. Now, I got a whole bunch more that I really want to tell you guys. Charisma works and how we can be more charismatic, okay? Now, for those of you who may think I got this from some strange place, well, I'm gonna tell you I got it from the Bible, and you can get it from the same Bible too, okay? It's in Corinthians, okay? I'm not sure if it's chapter 16 or chapter eight, but it won't hurt you to read the whole darn thing anyway, just to find it. <laughs> <laughs> but but what, I was, what I was reading the other day, it was talking about, well, the spirit, okay? Now, imagine this. Spirit is everything and everywhere, right? That's what we always say. Spirit is everywhere, okay? Now, I think of spirit like this, okay? Imagine a body. Just a body, okay? Now, a body has all kinds of parts, all kinds of different things. There's hands, there's feet, there's knees, there's elbows, there's fingernails, there's eyebrows, all parts of the body. And all of them are necessary. You'll never see a hand say that it's not a part of a body or never have a body not want to claim a hand. You will never have eyes say, oh, I wish I could ear, hear like ears because that's not what eyes do. Ears will be glad to be the hearing part, but all of them will be a part of the body and all are just as important. 
And, and, and if, you, if you hurt one part of the body, you hurt another part of the body. You ever notice? You stub your toe and everything hurts. You know, your back hurts, everything hurts. And it's the same thing if you're affirming. When you feel good, you just feel real good. You forget that, oh, yeah, my arthritis is supposed to be bothering me over here, or, oh, my eyes aren't working. It, it just doesn't work like that. We're all a part of that. So when I think of, like, that body, I see people in the world like that. So you may be an eyebrow, and you may be a thumb, and you may be a toe, and you may be a knee, and you may be an intestine. Who knows? We wouldn't care about all the rest of it all of a sudden. you just be concerned about, oh, my, my pen is hurting or, or oh my liver is gone and you forget about my lungs are good or this it's because that's how we're connected and I think if we think of each other like that then we see the value of each other no matter how we come off or how we look if you look like a hand you're just as important as me who looks like a foot you know and, and if you perform like a toe that's just as important as you who perform as, as tonsils okay, okay? And, and, and if you think that's wrong Pick a part of your own body <laughs> that you would like not want to have. Or you'd be willing to say, oh, I'll do without this one for a minute or two. And you will soon find out, <laughs> you know, that thing that you're sitting on is something that you may want to keep. <laughs> okay? <laughs> but that, that's how we can think of life and spirit. And when you do that, when you think like that, then you become more authentic because you know that every piece is important and not just every piece, but you are important because you're a part of that. So if you're the hand, you're just as important as the rest of them that are feet and toes. Every part is important. And if you think like that, if you live like that from the inside out, you will be charismatic. People will follow you. They will want to be there with you, and you will cast a spell on folks. Not any sorcery or any of that kind of stuff, but a spell. You know, like when everybody's at the game and everybody gets excited and they're all on that same page, that, that's that same kind of enthusiasm. It's contagious. With that kind of enthusiasm, that kind of power, that kind of spirit, you can do all types of things. Now, I would hope that you use it for good. Use it like Martin Luther King would. Use it like Mother Teresa would, Nelson Mandela. Um, you know, Obama's charismatic, uh, Trump's charismatic, Clinton's charismatic. There's a lot of people that are charismatic, so I suggest that you use it for good, okay? Because it can work for the opposite way. People will follow. That, that's why it works, because people are drawn to you like that. And if you know those skills, you can get people to follow you to do a lot of things. I want you to follow people for the good, okay? And I want you to recognize people that are around you that are charismatic, who are committed to what they're doing, who live life from the inside out. You got them all around here. I told you about Mike. I told you about Diane. Reverend Ann, is anybody more committed? Does anybody have more, more of that magnetism that makes you want to show up and, and be right and do right and do the right things? I think it's the baby in her. What do you think? You guys are special. You have your own little baby in Reverend Ann that you want to pick up and, you know, hold tight. And she draws you in and makes you want to be special, makes you feel special. That's the best lesson I can give you about charisma. Follow the one that you already got, okay? For me, though, what I would tell you, remember, charisma comes in all kinds of packages. It's how we're committed to things. It's about how we look, how we talk, how we move. It's about all of that, all of our, how we express our positive attitude. And all of us have it. And if you really, really want just the easy way, it just simply begins. It begins with simply a smile, OK? No matter how big your gap is, <laughs> know that you've been blessed, OK? You know, I got a dentist who's dying to fill my gap. <laughs> she is dying to fill my gap. Every time I go see her, she wants to put an implant in my gap. She doesn't understand those oddities, those things that make us vulnerable. That's what makes my smile. Thanks, folks. Thank you for sharing with us your beautiful smile, your charisma. 
uh, mom and I are a little disappointed because we're hoping it wasn't being Christ-like that there actually was a magic spell. Because <laughs> that seemed a little easier. <laughs> but uh, Speaking of charisma, our beautiful charismatic singer, uh, Bridget Rideau, I'm probably saying it, is this Bridget. Brigette Rideau, and she brought some uh, wonderful backup singers with her today. Carmen and Diane are going to bless you with um, Hallelujah.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Special hallelujah to uh, Carmen's beautiful suit. <laughs> now is the time in our service where we get to bless and share our love offerings and our givings with our spiritual family here at Unity of Arlington. Uh, we encourage you to keep giving online, those of you that are doing that. However, there is a basket in the foyer that you can use today. Uh, your gifts, your contributions are what make me. We empower people to live thriving spiritual lives. There's three very easy ways to give. Uh, you can go to unityforarlington.org, click on the donate button and do that. You can donate on your phone using the Tithely app. Tithely is T-I-T-H-E-L-Y. Uh, it's super easy. Uh, get the app, put it on your phone. Um, that's how I do it. It's the easiest one, I think. Or you can mail it in to 3525 South Bowen Road, Arlington, Texas, 76016. Uh, in any way that you choose to do it, uh, it helps us to serve our mission. I invite you now to uh, either figuratively or literally hold your gifts in your hand and let's say our offertory prayer together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and so it is. And now, amen. And now we will say together our offertory blessing for those things that we have received. Together. We accept these gifts with gratitude. We bless the gifts and the givers. We share them with joy. We use them with wisdom. We are blessed, grateful, and prosperous, and so it is. A few quick announcements, hopefully quick. I'm looking at you that are coming up to speak. First, our wonderful board treasurer, Brenda Matthews, has a board update for us. Could I just add my hallelujah to the beautiful song that we had this morning? That was so on $763.65. I know, it's amazing. Year to date revenue as of September 30th is $211,873.18. For a year to date income of $12,495.77. So, hallelujah! <laughs> Consistent giving is so important, it really does matter. It's what allows us to do the business of church because of your consistent generosity, and we're so grateful for that. We've been very blessed with additional giving from many of you recognizing the 49th anniversary and other expenses that are outside the budget in September. The love expressed through the spirit of generosity here is just amazing and so appreciated. Unity is always open to receive. We're so grateful for your generous donations no amount of giving is too big or too small. Unity has the power to transform lives and our love offerings are what make it possible. That's a great phrase for the church and for all of us individually, right? Open to receive, always open to receive. Oh. Uh, next up, our volunteer coordinator, Teresa Riggs, to share some exciting news. <laughs> He said, keep it short. We're not being recorded, right? <laughs> Michael, I was spellbound by your charisma. <laughs> the music was gorgeous. Thank you all. And who knew that all it took to get rid of our drought was to have a church work day outside planned? <laughs> It has been rescheduled for next Saturday. Okay? So from 9 to 12, <clears throat> excuse me, from 9 to 12, please come. And um, I just want to, th this is the condensed um, action, is who we are as a congregation. Our motto, we are the hands and feet of God and all other body parts. <clears throat> <laughs> so would you be willing to 
Come to the workday next Saturday to be a greeter. Talk to Marion at the back. To be on the tech team, talk to Mike Garvey. We would love to have you. And for our support for Key Elementary, a few things. First of all, thank you so much for the chocolates. Um, we have got plenty to share with the teachers, with the faculty and staff in the next week. I'm going this week to um, share that. And to that end, Marion, would you and your um, wonderful partners back there, you're gonna get a little card like this, a different color with a pen if you need one. Please, would you be willing to take the time to write down a thank you note? It doesn't have to be long. It could be one word. Thank you, with gratitude. But put your name, put your first name on it, please, and make it very personal. These beautiful little colored cards are gonna go on a black background uh, with all the chocolates so that people can read um, our appreciation for the faculty and staff at Key Elementary in support, okay? So I appreciate what you've done so far. The first two weeks in November, we are collecting reams of white copy paper for the teachers. So there's a uh, thing outside, would you please, in the next two weeks, remember to bring a ream of copy paper to put in that, because we are going to take that in November to show them our appreciation uh, and give them that support. And um, lastly, just a real quick personal note. My two granddaughters, two of my granddaughters, our granddaughters were here with us last week. They come from different faith traditions. And um, I asked them after the service, so what'd you think? And Mallory said, it was so positive. <laughs> and Sailor said, it was very peppy. <laughs> <laughs> and indeed it was. So if, if you would um, all just be willing to share your charisma in our volunteer services, please be love in action from Unity of Arlington. Now I'm turning it back over to our own Mr. Charisma. Before you leave, can oh. you tell us where you would like them to put their cards? Thank you so pick? much, Mr. Mr. Morris. Yes, just leave them at the back. I would appreciate that. We, they're very bright. We'll see them. If you'll leave them on the table, uh, we'll have those. Please, please be willing to make just a, a quick note and put your first name on it so that we can share these next week. Back to you, Mr. Charisma. Thank you. Be back. As a retired teacher, I promise you that uh, a simple note like that that doesn't seem like anything to you uh, is appreciated by teachers. So uh, thank you for doing that. Next Sunday, November 5th, we welcome back Reverend Larry Gould, whose talk title will be Sing the Song and Look for the Wisdom Provided to Us. How do we meet challenges and overcome them? We'll do a little life review and find out. Also a reminder that today is Fellowship Sunday, so please join us right there in the back after the service uh, for a little bit of fellowship and fun. Uh, thank you, Saul and Tanya for that, Tanya. Uh, now we will welcome back our young people by singing this big light of mine to remember that, to remind them and us to shine our lights. So song leaders, come up. And young people, come on down. This big light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This big light of mine, I shine everywhere I go. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning. Uh, this morning we read uh, from the Bible, David and Goliath, and we're starting to introduce the metaphysical Bible. So uh, some connections from this morning. All the men were afraid to fight Goliath, but David wasn't because he had, he had protection from God. Goliath wasn't scared, even though he was the youngest, to fight Goliath because he trusted God would keep him safe. All the other men were afraid to fight Goliath because they didn't have God in their hearts. Oh. 
And now please join me in saying our community prayer. We are here to shine as the light of God. I am the light of God. We are here to embrace as the love of God. I am the love of God. We are here to stand in truth as the power of God. I am the power of God. We are here to radiate as the presence of God. I am the presence of God. Wherever I am, God is, and so it is. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, a peace that was meant to be with God. be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let Now I invite you to call to mind your prayerful intention for our service this morning and take what you received with you out into the world. Take the message in your heart, out in the world as you live your precious life, sharing this message, sharing your charisma. And remember, you are a beloved child of God. And as God's child, you are wise, loving, healthy, and happy. And in the sunshine of God's loving care, you are free to develop according to the divine pattern of perfection that is within you and only you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. See you next week. Bye-bye.